Hello everybody, Calamity here, or at least that's what I told them to say in the live stream program. They didn't mention me. Today's video is going to be all about our favorite delivery girl, Kirara. She's currently in the banner right now, along with Sinnoh and Ayato. And this video is going to cover everything you know need to know about her, from her talents to her weapon options, artifacts, constellations, and we'll have a bit of a discussion slash sh showcase for the character at the very end. That's quite a lot to go over, so let's get started. Hirara does two things for your team. She applies a shield to prevent you from taking any damage and to prevent you from getting interrupted. And she also applies Dendro. Now, she doesn't apply Dendro better than a certain Archon, but I think she should be used with another Dendro character like Dendro Traveler, Yao Yao, Kali, etc, etc. In addition to that second Dendro character, I feel like that's the sweet spot where you'll have plenty of Dendro application. Now let's go ahead and talk about her talents and what they do. First up is the normal attack talent called Box Cutter. While the animations for this uh, normal attack talent look really really cool, unfortunately we don't really use this talent as that's not where the shields come from, it's not where the dendro application comes from, it's just a normal attack talent. But let's move on to where the good stuff is. Her elemental skill is called a Meow Tior Kick, and it has two versions, we have the press and a hold version. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just recommend that you use the hold version at all times because it's going to be... You want to do what's called the quick cancel. It's not any fancy tech or anything. Basically what this means is when you use the whole version of her skill, you want to just hit an enemy as fast as you can and just end it and the skill immediately by pressing the skill button again or by sprinting. And the reason that we want to use the hold version over the press version is because it generates more energy particles uh, for us. It also applies more dendro compared to just your simple tap skill or your press skill. But also the hold version has a bunch of different utility effects here that, were, that are listed and we're going to go over it. So when you do the hold version of Kirara's elemental skill, it she turns into a cat box, basically. During this, fa uh, during this form, of she can actually climb while in the box form. And her movement speed and jumping power are also increased as well. But her stamina consumption while she climbs is also going to be increased. So don't think you can use Kirara to climb really really tall mountains or anything like that it's ideally for like short-ish climbs the next thing to note is that once the duration of her elemental hold skill is done or you end it early you will do the flip claw strike which is what you do when you do the press version of this skill although it's a more powerful version of the flip claw strike other thing you should know about the skill is that it it does last for 10 seconds but it should be noted that the longer that you're in this cat box state the longer the cooldown will be but since we're doing the early cancel you're still gonna have the minimum cooldown which is i believe if we look at the skill attributes yeah it's about eight seconds it's gonna be probably a little bit more but it's gonna be around eight to nine seconds which is not that bad and then it states right here if you sprint or press the you know, the skill button again you'll end the state early which is exactly what we want to do uh once you hit the enemy with the cat box just ended immediately and you'll get more uh, again you'll get more energy particles as well as deal more damage and apply more dendro so if we look at the skill attributes you can see that uh the pre there's the press version of the tail flying kick at 176.8 percent at level 9 and then the flip claw strike damage having way more multiplier if you do the hold version at 244 percent but i'm just gonna go ahead and say like don't concern yourself with kirara's damage numbers we're not really using her as a dps at all she's our support character our shield support and dendro player but you can see that her shield lasts for 12 seconds and then we have an initial shield damage absorption and then you're gonna see a max shield damage absorption although it didn't tell us how we scale the shield that is going to be explained in a later um ascension talent and then you can see the cooldown goes from anywhere from eight seconds to 12 seconds depending on how long you use her hold skill next let's move on to her elemental burst which is called secret art surprise dispatch this one's fairly easy to explain She's going to throw a gigantic package at your enemies. It will explode and a bunch of bombs are going to be spawned around uh, where she threw the package. After some time has passed or enemies touch said bombs, they will explode 
and also do AoE Dendro damage. So this is how she applies her Dendro. Um, oh, well, she also applies it with her skill, but she applies even more Dendro from her burst. Now let's take a look at the skill attributes, and you might see that initial skill damage and think, whoa, what is she, Zhongli? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> it's, it's not as good as it sounds on uh, paper here. It does do some damage, but don't expect her package explosion to be doing um you know Zhongli numbers or any high burst damage numbers it is nice and again it does apply dentro and so do those bombs which is what we care about because you'll notice the bombs explosive damage multipliers here are really really low yes there's a lot of bombs on the field that spawn but still it's more for the dentro application not so much the damage and they do last for 12 seconds um, if no enemies come into contact with them that's when they'll explode and the cooldown is 15 seconds and thankfully this burst only has a cost of 60 energy, which is great. It means we don't need to build so much energy recharge on a Kirara, but we still need to build some. But it's a lot easier to manage than, of course, say 80. Next up, let's talk about her uh, Ascension talent, starting with Bewitching, Bewitching Tales. This is going to make it so that when you use your Elemental Hold version and you hit enemies with it, your shield, this is how you scale up your shield. As you hit enemies with your box cat form you're gonna get a stack of what's called reinforced packaging which increases your shield damage absorption basically making it a really really strong shield that can rival um other great shielders in this game like like layla for example once you start to get those stacks her shield becomes super super beefy you just have to work for it a little bit uh by hitting enemies with your elemental skill and that's when we can go back to the skill attributes and then you can see that the maximum... When you've gotten all the stacks of reinforced packaging, that's how you get this max shield damage absorption right here. Next up is Pupillary Variant. This is going to make it so that every 1000 HP increases the damage of both your elemental skill and your burst. Unfortunately, as cool as this sounds, this isn't really good because again, we just want shields and we want Dendro application from Kirara. Increasing the damage of both her skill and burst is nice, but it's not going to make, again, it's not going to make her all of a sudden this amazing DPS. Uh, it's like a mini version of Zhongli's, also um, one of his ascension talents. Next up is Cat's Creeping Carriage, and this is going to make it so that Kirara can help you sneak up on any meat producing animals like birds, boars, uh, anything really. And you can easily hunt them if you need to farm some meat. And she does not have to be active on the field for, to activate this talent. She just needs to be in the party. So feel free to sneak up uh, on a group of birds and then use some sort of AoE uh, character of your choice to get a bunch of free fowl, raw meat, chilled meat, and you're good to go. Next up are weapon options for Kirara. Now let's go over some of the four star ones. And since she is a support uh, character, the usual support weapons will work in this case. So things like the Favonia sword are always gonna be welcome here. It gives a bunch of energy recharge and it's gonna make it so she's like a pseudo battery for your team. She does need to, however, build a bit of crit rate so you can activate this weapons effect a little bit consistently. You can also use the Sacrificial Sword, same thing, just, you know, you can do two quick cancels of her elemental skill, and then hopefully the weapon effect procs, and then you just do it twice in a row, a bunch of energy for her, and a bunch of energy for your Dendro teammates as well. The best free-to-play option is going to be the Sapwood Blade. This is a craftable sword in Sumeru, also gives you energy recharge as a substat, and it makes it so that when you activate any Dendro um, reaction, you will drop a leaf that can be picked up by the character that's triggering all of these reactions. So if you're using her in a Hyper Bloom team, for example, you would make Kuki Shinobu or whoever your uh, light or Electro character of choice will be to pick up the leaf and they'll gain a big boost of Elemental Mastery. I don't have enough to get it to Refinement 5, so that's why I only get 105 Elemental Mastery, but Refinement 5 you get 120, which is a big boost in damage uh, no matter what Dendro team you're running her in. So really, really good weapon here. Uh, if you don't have the uh, previously mentioned weapons. Now, if you're looking for five-star options, it's pretty easy. You can give her the key of the Kajnizet. This is Nilo's signature weapon. It gives a ton of HP, which means a ton of shields for our Kirara, as well as increasing her damage thanks to the Ascension talent we saw earlier. And that's pretty much it for weapon options. She doesn't have a lot. Again, supports are really 
easy to build since, you know, usually the same stuff works. So if you have the Favonia sword, the Sacrificial sword, those are usually just good enough. And then Sapo Blade being a great free-to-play option. Next up are artifacts for Kirara. As you can see, mine has built the two-piece 20% HP uh, effect. So she has 40% HP from her artifacts. Um, if you are looking for more four-piece options, uh, you can give her the Tenacity of the Millilith. This is a really good set for her, especially when you use her skill because she can uh, keep the buff going for quite a while. And this is recommended for aggravate or spread teams because, you know, you don't... The attack percentage doesn't do anything for Hyper Bloom or Burgeon. So this is an option if you're looking for a four-piece set. You can also give her the classic Noblesse Oblige. This is also going to be good for aggravate or spread teams. Since she does get her elemental burst fairly frequently and it's only 60 cost, uh, she can also definitely hold on to that if you want. Another set is the Deepwood Memory set. If no one on your team has this set, it's recommended you at least get one. It reduces Dendro resistance by 30% uh, after your skill or your burst hits an opponent. So this is really, really good if no one else is using it. You can also give her the Instructor set. This set makes it so that on the four piece effect, when you use her or when you activate a elemental reaction, you will increase your party's elemental mastery by 120 for eight seconds. So if you pair this with the sapwood blade, that's 240 elemental mastery for your main DPS. That's a lot, a lot of damage. You have quite a bit of options to choose from. And honestly, they're all going to be good. It's all dependent on what teams you're going to be using Kirara on. The way I built her though, I just built her as my main shielder for a lot of my teams since I already have another Dendro character. And I use her in, in mainly Hyper Bloom and Burgeon teams. So I don't really have to build her for the... I don't really build her for Aggravate. Regardless of what artifact set you pick, once you've decided on an artifact set, which subsets are we looking for? And she is really, really easy to build. Like, really, really easy. Uh, you're going to look for energy recharge. Again, you're going to want to get as much as you need uh, to burst off cooldown consistently. Now, how much energy recharge this is is dependent on what team she's on. You know, if you have teammates that are using other Favonius weapons or if you're using her with Raiden Shogun, things like that, you know, she's not going to need that much energy recharge, but just for a good amount anywhere from 140 percent to 160 percent is usually a good range if you can get a little bit more uh, then that's also going to be great um, but once you have your energy recharge needs uh, that's when you just go all out for hp percentage you just want to stack as much hp as you can on her it's going to be more damage more uh, shields for her and th th that's really all she needs and then the other stats are just going to be things like Flat HP, maybe some defense, so she's a little bit tankier in the, in the you know case that she gets hit. But honestly, just HP percentage and energy recharge are the important things here. You don't need elemental mastery unless your plan is to use her as a trigger for your team. The only time you would want to build element elemental mastery on Kirara is if you're using her in like a Nilo Bloom team and you want Kirara herself to be the one triggering these blooms then that's the only time you're gonna want some elemental mastery on her but usually the elemental mastery goes to the other characters on the team oh yeah i should also mention that if you did give her a favonius sword then yeah you're gonna want a little bit of crit rate as well but if you if she's not using a favonius sword then you, you can skip the crit rate uh, entirely now for the sands goblet and circlet it is honestly pretty easy sands hp percentage here uh, I guess you could go energy recharge if you're really, really struggling on getting some, but you shouldn't really. I mean, all of the weapon suggestions I gave you have energy recharge as a subset, so it should be really easy to, to reach a, a decent enough energy recharge for her burst. So HP percentage, definitely. Goblet, um, you know, HP percentage again. Uh, try to get some good subsets on it, unlike mine. It's unfortunate that it didn't roll into energy recharge, but it's okay. Uh, and lastly, for the circlet, once again, HP percentage. Now you can also give her crit rate if you are, again, you're really, really struggling on getting some substat, uh, some crit rate substats to proc Favonius Sword. But if you're not using that, then just HP percentage all the way. And that's pretty much her artifact build. Again, really, really easy. Next up are her constellations, and I kind of want to go the 
go through these kind of quickly because, you know, these these are nice, but they're definitely not anything too, too crazy. But let's go ahead and start with C1, which is Material Circulation. For every 8,000 HP Kirara has, you will summon an additional bomb with her burst. You can only have up to a maximum of 4. So this is very easy to achieve since we're building HP percentage on her anyways. You just need 32,000 and you'll get 4 extra bombs, which is good. You know, more Denjo application. C2 is completely useless if you are a solo player. But if you do play co-op, this makes it so that your elemental skill when you're in your cat box form if you run into your fellow co-op mates, they will get a uh, shield, although it's a weaker version of the shield that she casts on herself. Uh, but it's still ni nice to give your, you know, your teammates a little something uh, to help them out. So if you've ever played with a Kirara in co-op, don't make it harder uh, for them by running away. Let them run into you so that they can just give you their shield and they can go to the next teammate. C3 and C5. Um, are just going to increase skill and burst respectively, but C3 being good here because, you know, more levels to your skill means more shields, and we don't really care about the damage, so C5 uh, is really useless. C4 is probably her best consolation. This allows Kirara to be a bit of an off-field Dendro uh, applicator. When you're using your main DPS and they do either a normal charge or plunging attack, Kirara will do a coordinated attack with them, similar to like Jing Cho or Yilan, where they'll do Dendro damage. However, the biggest upset about this constellation is that it has a 3.8 second cooldown, which is not what we want. You know, we want to apply it as much as possible, but this is still going to be good enough for like quick and aggravate teams to keep up that um, buff consistently without having to swap to Kirara. C6 is nice, but it's also kind of disappointing. It's just a 12% damage boost to all elemental damage for 15 seconds when you use either her skill or her burst. Again, this is great for quicken, spread, aggravate teams, but for Hyper Bloom, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I believe that's not going to increase your Hyper Bloom or your Burgeon or your Nilo Bloom damage, unfortunately. Now let's talk team setups for your Kirara, and in my opinion, one of the best teams you can put Kirara in is with Nilo. If you are unfamiliar with this character, Nilo, her biggest weakness is the fact that she d damages herself with her own Bloom Explosions. But if you have a Kirara on the team, well then you won't be taking as much damage from them since you'll have a nice beefy shield to protect you from your own explosions from your blooms. But uh, honestly, you don't have to use the team I had set up there. I just have Barbara set up as the trigger and, and Nahida there for more Denja application. But you can use whoever you want with your Nilo team. Again, as long as they're Hydro or Denja, you can use Yao Yao if you want more healing. Uh, Kali, Denja Traveler for more Denja application. And then for your... Hydro, you can use um, honestly anybody you want. Uh, you can use Kakomi even uh, for more heals as well. Uh, here's the Hyper Bloom team setup. Uh, again, you can interchange any of these characters really, but this is a very free to play friendly version of the Hyper Bloom team. You got Kirara, you got Kali here giving you the Denjo Resonance, which gives you a bunch of elemental mastery. Jing Cho and his incredible Hydro application. And Kuki Shinobu just needs to press E to set off those. Uh, Denjo cores for big hyper bloom damage and off you go. And Kirao is actually really nice on this team because uh, if you're familiar with Kuki Shinobu's kit, she does damage herself consistently, so she's pretty much on low HP all the time. Uh, and when you want to swap to her to get her healed or you know you need to activate that skill again, Kirao gives her that safety net just in case you do get hit. You can also do this with a Burgeon team, just swap out Kuki Shinobu with your Pyro uh, character of choice, whether that's Toma. Uh, Dia, uh, Deluke, whoever, honestly, and you'll be good to go. All right, here's an example of a aggravate team that you could use with Kirara. Again, we have Kiching as our main DPS here, and then Kali and Kirara here to provide their Dedro applications, as well as shields from Kirara. And Fischl is just here to consistently proc your aggravate so that Kiching can do as much damage. Um, as she can with her, you know, her entire kit, basically. And this would be an example of it. You could swap out Kaching for Raiden Shogun if you have her, or Sinnoh if you pulled for him in the banner that's going on right now. And of course, Kali can be swapped out for another Dendro Applicator of your choice. If you want healing, you can go for Yao Yao. Baiju, maybe, but I you have double shields at that point, and that's kind of weird. Dendro Traveler again. And then last but not least, 
the, the spread team. You know, it's the same basic concept here. You would just swap out your main DPS to, to Ignari, and then you, or I'll hate them if you have them, and then you just do a bunch of spreads for big damage, and that's, that's pretty much it. Also, the shield is nice for Tignari since, uh, well, you're not going to be in charge mode long, but just in case you get interrupted from doing your charge shots, it's just like a nice little safety, uh, safety blanket, if you will. All right, and that is going to be it for our quick, hopefully quick, Kirara guide. In the background, you, you should be seeing uh, me using her in the Spiral Abyss. She does fine. Um, it's really hard to showcase characters like her in the Spiral Abyss in general though, just because, you know, she's not the one dealing damage, she's just a shield support. At least that's how I use her in some extra Dendra applications. So we just, I just swapped her, I quickly use her elemental skill to apply a shield, and then everyone else kind of does the damage. I got Jing Cho using his burst, I got Mahita's applying her Dendra, and then of course Kuki Shinobu just needs to press E which results in big, big damage. But <clears throat> with that being said, I think Kirara is just in general a really good unit overall. She makes exploring a lot easier thanks to her elemental skill. And technically you don't even have to use her in the teams I mentioned. If you're a brand new player and you don't have any shielder at all, Kirara will fit right in on those teams. Just use her in any team you're, you want a little bit more comfort on since shields provide you immunes to being interrupted. So if you're playing a character like Ganyu, for example, uh, and you hate that, you know, an enemy hitting you knocks you out of your charge shots, well then having a shielder just gives you that nice safety that you're looking for to be uninterrupted. As for her Dendro application, obviously she's not the best at it. She does need a little bit of help. So, you know, if you are using her in a Dendro team, which you should, uh, definitely recommend lots and lots of other characters out there. Again, Kali, Nahida, Dendro Traveler are going to be some good options. Yao Yao. Because um, she does do some Dendro application, it's just not frequent and it's a little bit inconsistent. So, for example, her bombs could have a really bad spread and maybe the enemy doesn't run into them or they just completely run away from where you use her ult. And then it's a wasted, uh, you know, Dendro application there. Um, quick take quick tip about her um her burst is that you can actually move those bombs around so if you bring someone like sucrose or kazaha uh you can actually group them up together maybe you know to move them around to a better spot a little bit um they can be moved uh which is a nice little uh mechanic there Hirara definitely gets better with her constellations again her c4 giving her that off-field dendra application that she so desperately needs but I believe that's going to be it uh, for this uh, guide. If you have any questions about Kirara, about her kit, about her talents, teammates, anything, maybe I didn't explain something well enough, feel free to ask me in the comments down below. If this guide was help helpful to you, don't forget to leave a like and or subscribe uh, to the channel. I'll be making more guides for both Genshin and Star Rail in the future. Um, or if you are a fellow Kirara user and you have some tips for the new Kirara players out there that are pulling on the banner right now and, and got some consolations for her, feel free to leave your advice uh, in the comments as well. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.